of The Lost Years of Merlin. I am your lovely host, Hannah, and let's get to it. This one, in the last chapter, they met a spider named the Grand Elusa, and they gave and she gave them some hints on how they can beat the evil King Stangmar. Uh, and it turns out Emrys is, shockingly enough, very important to the story. So anyway, chapter 22 is called Encounter in the Mist. Okay. I emerged from the cave into the swirling mist. I could barely make out Rhea, even though she was only a few paces away. Beside her stood Shim, so covered with sticks and dirt and leaves that he looked more like a miniature mountain than a miniature person. Glancing down at the Galator, I noticed it no longer glowed. Rhea sat in a small grove of elms, where five young saplings had sprouted around an elder. She watched me exit the cave, clearly relieved. Then she leaned close to the old elm in the center of the grove. She began talking with it, whispering in low, swishing tones. In response, the tree rocked slowly on its roots, creaking with a voice that seemed terribly sad. In time, Rhea turned to me, her eyes clouded. This tree has seen more than 200 springs in Druma Wood, yet now it's sure to see, have seen its very last. It weeps every day for the future of its children. I told it not to lose hope, but it said it only... Uh, but it said it has only one hope left, to live long enough to do at least some small things to keep the Druma safe from warrior goblins. But it expects just to die of grief instead. Shim, standing beside her, rubbed his dirt-caked nose and looked down. I could only nod sadly and watch the streaming mist. All at once, I picked up the sweet scent of apple blossom. You seem so very glum said a familiar voice. When? Rhea leaped to her feet. Whatever brings you here? You almost never go out walking anymore. Passing a branched hand before her face, Quinn emerged from the mist. I shouldn't have followed you, she hesitated, a touch of fear in her teardrop eyes. Is it possible you can still forgive me? Rhea's eyes narrowed. You have done something terrible. At that instant, six huge warrior goblins stepped out of the mist. Swiftly, they surrounded us. Their thin eyes glinted beneath pointed helmets. Their muscular arms protruded from shoulder plates. Their th three-fingered hands grasped the hilts of broad swords. Beads of perspiration gathered on their gray-green skin. One of them, wearing red armbands above his elbows, brandished his sword at Quinn. In a wheezing, wheezing, rasping voice, he demanded, Which one has it? Quinn glanced furtively at Rhea, who was glaring at her in astonishment. They promised me I could use the Galator to make myself young again. She waved her shriveled fingers. Don't you see? My hands will wither no more. Rhea winced with pain. I can't believe you would do this. After all the years... Which one? rasped the goblin. Quinn pointed a knobby finger at me. The warrior goblin stepped into the grove of elms and aimed his sword at my chest. Give it to me now, or I shall make it a very painful for you first. Remember what you said, urged Quinn. You promised not to harm them. The goblin, we the goblin wheeled around to face the aging tree lane. Tree lane. A thin smile curled from his crooked mouth. I forgot, but did I make any promise about you? Quinn's eyes widened in fright. She started to back away. No, cried Rhea. It was too late. The goblin sword whizzed through the air, slicing off one of Quinn's arms. She shrieked, grasping the open wound as brown blood gushed, gushed from it. There, the goblin's wheezing laughter filled the air. Now you won't have to worry about that old hand anymore. He advanced at Quinn. Now let's do the other one. Screaming in terror, blood pouring from her stunted arm, Quinn stumbled off into the mist. Let her go, rasped the goblin. We have more important work to do. He jabbed his sword, dripping with brown blood at my throat. Now where were we? I swallowed. 
If you kill me, you'll never know how it works. A sinister look filled the goblin's face. Now that you remind me, my master did tell me to keep alive the person who wears it, but he said nothing about keeping your friends alive. I sucked in my breath. Perhaps if I agree to spare your friends, though, you will tell me how it works. He winked at another goblin. Then my dear master and I will have some bargaining to do. He pivoted to Shim, who was shaking in fear, and kicked him so hard he flew across the grove. Shall I start our fun with this dirty little dwarf? No, I think not. He turned to Rhea, his thin eyes gleaming. A girl of the forest. What an unexpected pleasure. Rhea stepped backwards. The goblin nodded, and two members of his band lunged at her. Each of them seized one of her leaf-draped arms. Give it to me, ordered the goblin. I glanced at Rhea, then back at him. How could I possibly give up the Galator? Right now! I did not move. All right, then. We'll amuse ourselves while you make up your mind. He flicked his wrist at Rhea. To start with, break both of her arms. Instantly, the goblins wretched Rhea's arms behind her back. At the same time, she cried out, Don't do it, Emrys! Don't! She shrieked with pain. No, I pleaded. I pulled the Galator out of my tunic. The jewels glinted darkly in the mist. Spare her. The goblin smiled savagely. Give it to me first. Rhea's captors twisted her arms harder, almost lifting her off the ground. She shrieked again. I removed the cord from my neck. The grove was silent except for the sad creaking of the old elm. I hefted the precious pendant, then handed it over. The goblin snatched it from me. As he gazed into the jeweled object, he wheezed excitedly. Meanwhile, his greenish tongue danced around his lips. Then he smirked at me. I have changed my mind. First I will kill your friends, and then I will ask you how it works. No! All of the goblins wheezed in laughter. Their immense chest shook at their leader's joke, while Rhea winced painfully. All right, I rasped, all right, rasped the goblin. Maybe I will be merciful. Show me how it works, now. I hesitated, not knowing what to do. If there was ever a moment to break my vow and call my on my powers, this was it. Did I dare? Yet even as I asked myself the question, my mind filled with surging, searing frames, flames. The screams of Denidius, the smell of my own burning flesh. Try, you coward, a voice within me cried. You must try. Yet, just as urgently, another voice answered. Never again. Last time you destroyed your eyes. This time you will destroy your very soul. Never again. Show me, commanded the goblin. Even through the thickening mist, I saw his muscles tighten. Raising his sword, he aimed the blade at Rhea's neck. Still, I hesitated. Just then, a strange wind, wilder by the second, shook the branches of the old elm in the center of the grove. Its creaking rose to a scream. As the goblin looked up, the tree snapped free of its roots and toppled over. He had only enough time to howl in agony as the tree crashed down on top of him. I reached for the galator, which had dropped to the ground. I slung the leather cord over my neck. With my other hand, I grabbed the fallen goblin's sword and started slashing at another member of the band. The goblin, far stronger than I, quickly backed me against the trunk of the downed tree. The goblin reared back to strike me down. Suddenly, he froze. A look of sheer horror came over his face. The horror I had seen him on the horror I had seen only once before, in Denidius when the flames swallowed him. I whirled around, then I too froze. The sword fell from my hand, for out of the swirling mist came a gargantuan white spider, her jaws slavering. Hungry bellowed the great spider in a blood curdling voice. I am hungry. Before I knew what was happening, Rhea grabbed me by the wrist and pulled me out of the path of the Grand Elusa. To the shrieks of the cornered goblin, we ran down the hill, closely pursued by Shim. The little giant sprinted almost as fast as we did ourselves, his feet kicking up a cloud of dirt and leaves. Two of the warrior goblins dodged the monster, leaving their companions to fend for themselves and chased after us. Wheezing and cursing, waving their swords in the air, they pursued us through the mist-shrouded boulders. 
Though we charged with all our speed down the hillside, they gained on us steadily. Soon they were almost on top of Shim. Suddenly, a river appeared out of the mist. Rhea cried out, The water! Jump in the water! With no time to ask questions, Shim and I obeyed. We hurled ourselves into the fast-flowing water. The goblins plunged in after us, thrashing their swords in the current. Help us! Rhea shouted, although I had no idea to whom. Then she slapped her hands wildly against the water's surface. At once, a wave began to crest in the middle of the river. A great glistening arm of water rose up, bearing Rhea, Shim, and myself in the palm of its hand. The liquid fingers curled over us like a waterfall, as the hand lifted us high above the river's cascading surface. Spray, sparkling with rainbows, surrounded us. The arm of water whisked us downstream, leaving our pursuers far behind. Minutes later, the arm melted back into the river itself, dumping us on a sandbar. We climbed out of the water, bedraggled but safe, and, in the case of Shim, considerably cleaner as well. Okie dokie, so that was chapter 22. I can't believe we're already on chapter 22. We're, like, pretty far into the book, like, over halfway, I think. So that's exciting times. That's the, this is the continuing side. So the next chapter is chapter 23, and we will read that tomorrow. It's called Great Losses. Okay, have a good night.